Yo, what's going on? So today I want to talk about how you can make your drum samples really knock and sound super, super tough. Um, and in order to do that, what we're going to be doing is sort of taking advantage of the sample rate of whatever uh, sampler you're going to be using, whether it be the MPC-1 in my case, or SP, DAW, Machine, it'll work on anything that you're recording sound into. So I want to just get right into this. Uh, today, this is the drum break we're going to be using. We're going to be using the drum break off of this record, I've Got So Much To Give by Barry White. The drum break's super hard, it's been sampled a ton of times, so if you ever see this record and you're looking for drums, make sure you pick this up. But as of right now, I have no sounds loaded up into the MPC, so let's just record the drum break, you can hear how it sounds, and then we'll start making sure it really knocks. Alright, let's do it. So I'm going to arm the MPC, record, play. Cool, so I'm going to edit the sample and then just to start I'm going to normalize the sample. I always start by doing this just to make sure it's loud enough. So let's just cut out the original tail end here and also take out that little drum fill at the beginning. And then I'll take out that little piece of the at the end where it had the uh, instruments come in. So I just took that drum sample that we recorded and trimmed and I put it on this first pad right here. So right now the drum sample sounds super clean, which sometimes is really good, but sometimes we want it to sound a little bit more grimy, a little bit dirtier, and knock a little bit harder. So what we're going to do now is use the trick that I use to try to accomplish that. So like I said, we're going to be exploiting the sample rate of the MPC-1 or whatever sampler you're using. So sample rates are measured on machines or computers or whatever piece of gear you're using in kilohertz. And what a kilohertz is, is the number of thousand times that a piece of audio is sampled within one second. So for example, the MPC-1 has a sample rate of 96 kilohertz. And that means every second that I'm recording, it's taking that audio and recording it into 96,000 pieces of information. So in order to exploit this, the first thing I'm going to do is do it manually using the record and how we record the sample into the MPC. And then afterwards, we can also do it in the same way if you're just pulling a digital sample. Whatever drum break you're using, you can do it just straight in the MPC as well. But just to start, I'm going to re-record the sample. So I'm going to put the record player onto 45 speed, 45 RPM, and then I'm going to move the pitch arm all the way up. So now let's re-record that drum pattern, but we'll do it at a way higher speed. Let's do it. So when I first recorded the drum pattern, I think it was around 9 seconds. When I just recorded it now, it's going to be 5 seconds. So what we have now are two recordings. The first drum pattern, which sounded totally normal just like this. And then we have the second sped up drum break, which currently sounds like this. And both of those same recordings have the exact same sample rate of 96 kilohertz. So now what we're going to do is take that sped up drum break and we're going to lower the semitones until it's the same pitch as the original sample. And you notice it'll also be the same speed. And you'll see what happens after we do that. Let's do it. Okay, so we now have two drum samples that are the same pitch, same speed, but one of them was recorded faster and one of them was recorded at regular speed. Here's the sample at regular speed. And here's the sample that was recorded fast and then slowed down. As you can hear, the sample that was recorded fast and then slowed down sounds way crunchier. And that's because even though that they're recorded at the same sample rate, when I slow down the sample, you can't add any more information to the audio that was already recorded. So we're basically manually lowering the sample rate in the MPC-1. And I'm going to take this a step further because what I'm going to do is take that semi of the first sample that we did and I'm going to put it up even higher. Also, I'll even put it up seven semitones. So now it just sounds like this. Crazy fast. But what I'm going to do is resample that 
and then slow it down even more and you'll get even more of a sense of how crunchy you can get your drums just by raising the semitone, re-recording, and then slowing it back down because in that sense, you're, you're manually lowering the sample rate of the sample. So let's do that. I'm gonna go into the sampler. I'll make the input uh, resample left and right. And then I'm gonna arm this, record. Stop, and now the sample was three seconds. It started off as a nine second drum sample, and now it's down to three. So now I'm gonna play side by side each of the three drum patterns that we've recorded. The first being the regular speed, regular recording. The second, we recorded quick and then slowed down. And then the third, we turned up the semi even higher and slowed it down again. And you can hear the difference between those three samples. So let's hear it. Here's the first one. Here's the second. And here's the third. As you can hear, we're, we're losing a lot of that definition and it's just making it a lot more crunchy. Okay, so after all that, I've added a compressor to that lower sample rate drum pattern that we just finished. And now you can get a real sense of what we're dealing with and you can see why I say you get a real punch and a real grit out of that drum pattern when you follow these steps. It brings a lot of life out of those hi-hats and it gets a lot of push from the kick drum as well. And then you get a little bit of that uh, sort of overdrive on the snare, it just really pushes it. Here's the super clean. And here's the new one. So now that we have this super punchy drum break, I'm going to chop it up and put it across these eight pads because it's a two bar drum break. And then we can make a real beat out of this and you can really just get a full sense of how well it works. Let's do it. So here's how it sounds. And the benefit to doing that is we can now sort of change the drum pattern a little bit and tailor it to what we want it to sound like. So I came up with this drum pattern. It's only gonna be one bar, but I changed the order of the drums a little bit and here's how it sounds. So let's go ahead and lay that down and then I'll see if I can find a sample and we'll really just put a full beat together using this new drum pattern. Let's do it. Yo, I'm kind of going crazy. I just found a sample on this Space Cruiser Yamato record. Most of the record's just talking, but I just happened to look at it for a sample, and there's a crazy vocal sample on here, and I think it'll match the beat perfectly, and it'll really show these drums off. So here's what the sample sounded like originally. Nuts. But I'm going to lower the semi down to negative six, and this is what we can do on these hard drums. Okay, let's lay this down. This is nuts. Let's do it. I just need to figure out a good pattern and let's record it. All right, let's add some bass to this. I think uh, I'm gonna keep this pretty simple. When a, when a beat kind of comes together like this and all the ingredients work, I don't wanna impose too much onto it. It's just sort of meant to be right now. So let's take some bass, put a bass line on it and then wrap it up. This is crazy. All right, I think that's it for this beat. Like I said, when the ingredients sort of come together, you might not want to impose yourself too much. I really like the way this beat turned out, but I really hope this video showed what you can do just by sort of manipulating the sample rate on your drums. It gives them that extra punch and that extra sort of grittiness that sometimes they need. And make sure that after you go through the steps to lower the sample rate, you put a compressor on those drums too, because it'll just give them that extra little punch as well. But I hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and let me know what you want to see in a future video. Love you guys so much. Thank you. Peace.